Um, I don't know if you, unlike a lot of other athletes, read these draft boards and stuff, but they've got you kind of right around the area that the Toronto Raptors are picking. So does that give you a little bit extra juice when you come into this building, knowing that this could possibly be where you end up? Right, uh, Toronto being a team that went to Eastern Conference Finals and having the top 10 picks, uh, a great combination to have, and I think I would be able to fit well. And so, you know, coming to this workout, I know I want to impress and show what I can do. And so, you know, I was excited to come up to Toronto. How do you feel you did? Do you feel like you impressed? Yeah, I felt like I was able to show uh, some things uh, that I've been improving on even from the season and uh, being able to show my outside game and also the inside. And so just having a good mix here and uh, being able to show what I can do. What do you think of the emergence of like the 6'10 three-point shooter now in the game? It's, it's a, a relatively new phenomenon. Right. But is that what you grew up wanting to do, like seeing where uh, the game was going? I've always grown up playing on the perimeter. I played point guard all the way up to eighth grade. And then uh, I had a, a coach uh, during my uh, sophomore uh, AU season saying, hey, you're like 6'9, it's time to go on the block. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, I was able to be able to take that summer and find a good mix of playing inside, outside, uh, just taking mismatches. And so, you know, being 6'11 and laying the shoot outside the perimeter, it, uh, yeah. it helps me at this position. The way the game's going, having a versatile four is huge. And so be able to play all over just as a player and on position is something I think huge. Yeah, now we had the pleasure of Steve Novak here for a little bit. What do you remember him when you were growing up? You watching him as a kid? Yeah, you no, know, uh, Steve Novak, I like talking to him. He's a Marquette guy. Yeah. I was able to watch him growing up. And, uh, you know, he's uh, he was up here for a little bit. And, uh, you know, he's uh, been a good help for me. He's a vet now, considered in this league. And so uh, he's helping uh, myself as a young Marquette guy, uh, trying to figure stuff out. So he's been he's been good to me. Yeah, really nice. So what are you focusing on for the next level? Is there things you're looking to add, introduce to your game, or something you want to refine? Yeah, I think just it's the next level, so I have to take my game to the next level. And so uh, just uh, keep continuing working on my versatility. I know something I got to do is get, get stronger. Um, and not that I have to get heavier, but just it's a man's league now. And so I got to put uh, weight, not weight on, but uh, just some strength and be able to hold myself on the inside with some uh, bigger guys and, uh, you know, just be able to be able to knock down the outside NBA three-point line. That's something I've been adjusting to and I feel like I've been adjusting to it well, but uh, just being able to work all over. You mentioned playing on the perimeter before. Obviously, a big thing about being a stretch four is, you know, those pick and pop scenarios where you might end up in a four on three um, and that playmaking should come in handy. Uh, it, is it tough to show those kind of skills in a workout setting like this um, where it's where it's just the two of you and they're not game situations necessarily? Yeah, obviously, you don't get to go through all the game situations, but, uh, you know, they put you through good workouts where you can show some stuff and uh, sometimes on yourself, you got you to gotta show it your own. And so, uh, you know, just find different, uh, uh, spot, spots to be able to do different things on the court and uh, showcase what you can do. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do it all, but uh, you know, just be able to make the right decision and right the right play.